And it's scoreless so far. For those of you just joining us, with 10 minutes and 44 seconds left, the flag was thrown right at Eric Moten's feet, the rookie from Michigan State. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler bring you this NFL game of the month. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. The holding call will go against the rookie from Michigan State, the left guard, Eric Moten. San Diego trying to get that counter gap play going where they pull the left guard and tackle. There, Moten, the left guard, hooked Kevin Green, who was blitzing, trying to force the play back inside. So now it'll be first and 20 through San Diego. Back outside of the Rams' 44-yard line. Freeze moving the pocket under throws his intended target. Anthony Miller, who was shut out last week for the first time in 38 consecutive games. The Rams are going to show an awful lot of different looks on defense today, Joel, because they feel like they've got to keep fresh faces in there, and they like to create matchup problems for San Diego. But there, they went with the nickel package being a long yardage. There, Kevin Green and the other outside linebacker, Strickland, try to get up underneath on some pass rush stunts. When what much good. You see the defensive rankings as it's now second and long, second and 20 for San Diego. They started with the ball back at their own 18-yard line. Freeze on the short one. Kendrick Taylor with a flag down in the play. It was Anthony Newman delivering that wake-up call early. Newman, the nickelback, came in and really unloaded. Unbelievable. Well, we got an offsides call on the defense, so the play will not count. They'll get another chance to look at it there. But that was Number 97, a defense, lined up in a neutral zone. Five yards, repeat second down. Gerald Robinson, the right end on pass rushes. He, a uh, little bit offsides there, getting into that foreign territory. But the thing about the Rams, they, they're going to use a lot of different combinations, a lot of stunts. They know they're not big and strong enough to stand up against San Diego all day, but they think they can do some things with their speed and quickness and create some problems for them. It was interesting yesterday, Dan, when you look at the Rams' defensive front, their coordinator, Jeff Fisher, we're looking at right now, the defensive coordinator said, we mismatch. Well, right now it's a mismatch for us up front against San Diego. We don't have enough large bodies. Second and 15, Ronnie Harmon following his blocking very nicely to the 30-yard line. Well, there's that counter gap play that Fisher was scared to death of. He said, look, to stop that play, we are just going to have to get an awful lot of good play out of our inside guys. Now, they've, they've got some guys back off of the injury list with Alvin Wright, Robert Young, and Chris Pike going to play a lot today inside. But the thing is, those big guys have got to grab grass and anchor that, that blocking down scheme that San Diego has and not wash and create a big gap there for the backs. Third down for the Chargers. They converted on their first one deep in their own territory. This is now third, a little bit better than five. They pick up the blitz and wide open is Anthony Miller. Touchdown, San Diego. Thirty yards on the reception, and the Chargers with an early lead. Jeff Fisher can't like that because he really felt like if they blitzed and put pressure on Freeze, they could create some problems and he not be able to hurt them as much. Here they're blitzing, an all-out blitz. They're bringing eight guys. What they have is Terrell trying to cover Anthony Miller. Now Terrell's a fine safety, but that's, that's tough on a corner or anyone in a blitz condition. John Carney on for the point after. So the Chargers get the ball, hang on to it for the first six-plus minutes of the opening 15 minutes of play and score on their first drive of the day, traveling 82 yards in the process and are on top by seven. Anthony Miller with the 30-yard touchdown reception. That's only his 13th, make it his 14th catch of the entire year after accumulating 138 receptions the previous two seasons. So Miller is found early by Freeze, and if you're into Omens, well, who scores first? The Rams 2-0 when they get on the board first, but 0-3 when it's the opposition. And right now, it's the opposition, San Diego by 7. As the Rams get ready for it for the first time this afternoon. And Ron Brown, the former Olympic sprinter, 
with a bit of a seam out to the 30-yard line. Just picked up a couple of weeks ago after he was waived as a defensive back by the L.A. Raiders. Now we have an opportunity to check the ITT 10-minute ticker. The Washington Redskins win again. They are now 7-0. The New Orleans Saints also undefeated. New Orleans at 6-0. Buffalo rolling right along. 6-1 record for the Buffalo Bills. Dallas doing a number on Cincinnati at home as Cincinnati is still looking for their first win of the year. And Minnesota is bouncing back, and they have won over Phoenix. After that disappointment in Detroit, Everett throwing on first down. He's got a man available. And overshoots by a good margin, Henry Eller. Tough, tough start this year for Jim Everett. Well, San Diego's defense is going to be an all-out attacking style today. They feel like they got to keep Everett in the dark here. He hasn't been able to get on track. They're going to keep after him all day. Finally, the Rams, Dan, have their offensive line healthy and back in their regular positions, especially Jackie Slater, who missed the last three games. Delpino and McGee joining Everett in the backfield. Allard and Cox with the wideouts. And Devon Johnson, the tight end. Second and ten from the 30. Devon Johnson can't hang on. The tight end. He took quite a shot from Martin Bayless. The strong safety. Front seven. Very effective group last Sunday against the L.A. Raiders. In fact, their last two games. Very, very efficient efforts by this de defensive front seven. Leslie O'Neill finally came up with his second sack of the season. The right side linebacker and the secondary bird sealed Bayless and the rookie from Texas, their first round draft choice, Stanley Richard. So an early third down for the Rams. Will it be three snaps in out? They've got a third and ten at their own 30. And Everett on his way down. A sack for San Diego. And it was Junior Seau. They call him the Mad Tanzanian. Well, he plays like a mad Tanzanian, Tasmanian devil, whatever you want to call him. All I know is this guy has got a rocket lit every time he comes out here. Here you'll see Seau turning the corner, just running by Damone Johnson, the big tight end. It's a tough guy to handle one-on-one. -on -one. Dale Hatcher will punt it away for Los Angeles. A sack early for Junior Seau. And Kittrick Taylor had a 24-yard return last week against the Raiders. Waits back inside his own 40, calling for the fair catch. And he has it. So when we come back, the Chargers with a 7-point lead will have it first and 10 at their own 32-yard line. Anaheim Stadium, Joel Myers along with Dan Hampton. A 7-0 San Diego lead over the Los Angeles Rams. The Chargers get it back for the second time. Their first drive, they took it 82 yards for his score. A 30-yard touchdown pass to Anthony Miller. Now they've got it first and 10 at their own 32. Marion Butts' first carry of the day. Can't break it. It's it's about a three, though, to the 35-yard line. Brought down by the middle linebacker, Larry Kelm. The blocker for so many years, Dan, for Sammy Smith, at least the last couple of years for Sammy Smith at Florida State. Asked him yesterday, you talked to Sammy much? He said, no, not since I played with him in Tallahassee. <laughs> well, I tell you what, he must he should be getting residual checks because... Uh, Butts, a, a fine ball carrier, but he wasn't asked to do that in college, and, and now he feels like maybe, you know, what goes around comes around. He, he's getting his chances. Second and seven, the ball at the 35-yard line. The quick one for Anthony Miller. And he couldn't hang on to a very catchable ball at the 40-yard line. The San Diego offensive line has been doing a very fine job of protecting the young quarterback, John Freese. But the thing is, how much pressure can the Rams generate with just a four-man rush? Here, they're not getting a big surge up the middle. And if they don't get that early, Fisher, will, the coordinator, Jeff Fisher, will have to go back with that blitzing package, Joel. But that got him burned the first drive. So we'll just see if those front four guys can kind of kick it up a notch. John Freese now four of seven passing. So Jeff Fisher, the coordinator, taking some chances early. And the Rams have definitely been burned early as Freeze has picked it up very nicely. Over the middle, Miller's got it. Another first down and then sub for San Diego inside the Rams 40 on the crossing pattern. Anthony Miller having a little bit of the drop-itis here the last couple of weeks, but here he's perfect. Freeze back, great protection by the line, throws a dart, splits the safeties, and 
This is where he's very dangerous, Joel. When he gets that ball and he can kind of slash across the field and try to get up the sideline. Big play for him. Anthony Miller in his fourth year from Tennessee. Boy, has Tennessee turned down in recent years some great sprinters that have been outstanding football players as well as track stars. Thurbridge. First and ten just inside the Rams' 40. The counter from Marion Butts. Good surge by the offensive line. That's four on the carry to the 36-yard line. As we have an opportunity to look at the ITT 10-minute ticker, all of us at NBC Sports would like to extend our condolences to the family of longtime NFL referee Gene Barth, who passed away Friday in his hometown of St. Louis after a lengthy illness. A distinguished 21-year career, worked Super Bowl 18. To the Barth family, our condolences from NBC Sports. Second and six at the 36. Marion Butts is he tough once he gets around the corner. And he's down inside the 33 near the 32. Here we're going to see San Diego just basically run that veer package where they try to put Butts on the corner, get him isolated on maybe a safety or a, a one of the lighter linebackers and let him just run over the guy. That's the thing about San Diego. They're so big. they got so much physical talent just to overwhelm you. By the end of the game, the Rams are going to be beat and bruised if they don't get them stopped early in this game. You've got Butts at 245 pounds and Bernstein at 238 pounds in the backfield. Nice tandem. Pretty good one-two punch, third and short, and it's complete to McEwen. He does have the first down inside the 30 of the 28. John Breeze looks like a completely different quarterback than we saw in week one against Pittsburgh. It's funny how, how much this kid has just developed and matured. We saw in the first week, wide-eyed pup. I mean, didn't realize, you know, the intricacies. And, and talking with him yesterday, Joel, he said it, it's amazing to me how much of a small window of opportunity you have as a quarterback. If you miss throw the ball a foot one way or another, it could be an interception or a drop. And it's great to see a kid like this grow up so much each and every week, but he had to. I mean, it was his job to lose, and he's done a great job growing. Well, you better believe that watching the T.W. Fishers or Steve's dugout back in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, his hometown is Freeze, has a wide open eight back Derek Walker. Another first down with a flag on the play. He's down to the 16, more than enough for the first down, but there is a flag. And it goes against San Diego. So much of it. We'll see what the call is here. Bling. Number 53 offense, 10 yards, repeat first down. Well, Courtney Hall, the center, number 53, more or less head fakes the guy to the left, gets him going, see? And then when they come back with that misdirection counter, boot action, then the guy tries to come back across your face, and a lot of times you lose your position. And it's pretty easy to get a holding call when you try to get a guy going one way and then he reverses and comes back. So. They had their eye on it. That wasn't that bad of a hole. So instead of a first down inside the 16, it's a first down and 20 for John Freeze. He had his man off the fingertips of Nate Lewis. And things were working over the middle early. Part of the reason is those safeties are vacating that center portion of the field. They're out there. Jeff Fisher likes to run a lot of six call, which is basically the safety's getting on top, letting those corners get up and force things at the line. And when you do that, you're vulnerable to the quick slants. And we've seen two or three of them come open here. Head coach John Robinson told us yesterday he loves the scheme and the philosophy. He truly feels, though, it's a year away until they get more bodies on the defensive side. I think he just likes the aspect of going out and attacking people for a change. Second and 20. Sounds like a former defensive lineman to me. Flag on the air once again. Over the middle, it's complete. Kittrick Taylor has got it inside the 15. It's good enough for the first down, but let's find out about the flag. Looks like offensive holding again. Gordon McCarter calls procedure on San Diego. So twice now they've had a first down deep in Rams territory taken away by yellow flag. Illegal formation, offense. Tackle not up on the line of scrimmage. Five yards, two feet, down. Don't see the tackle make that that often, Dan. Well, you'll see on the left of your screen here. Looks like the left, the right guard pops up. Oh, looks like the. Oh, I see. 
they were getting a call here that it was a tackle not on the line of scrimmage, Joel. So a lot of times those big tackles, if they're scared of that outside speed, they'll try to get a head start and back up off the line. He's up there close enough. Delay. Ronnie Harmon into the secondary. Still on his feet inside the 30 with another flag down. It looks like it could be potentially another holding call as David Richards is upset. The right guard. Jeez. Well, Dan Hannon can't be happy with the way this offensive line keeps shooting itself in the foot. Play after play, good play, penalty. Holding, number 65, offense, 10 yards, repeat second down. David Richards, the big right guard. We'll get a look at this and see just how bad he tried to lighten up here. You, Hawkins, number 70, the defensive tackle, had a stunt charge on the inside. Richards, knowing he can't let him in there at any cost, grabs him. I'll tell you what, Joe, they're really watching this holding because it's not that bad. I played in a lot worse conditions. Never got a call one. That's three big penalties already on this drive for the San Diego Chargers. Drive that started back at their own 32-yard line. Without the flag, they'd be inside the 15-yard line of the Rams. Instead, now second and forever. And the quick one, Sean Jefferson has it. Outside of the 45 to the 48-yard line. But well short, a big third down coming up when we return. But first, Bob Costas and an update. Joel at Arrowhead, Miami tries for the tying TD. Sammy Smith hit, fumbled at the goal line. Linebacker Chris Martin picks it up. He goes an even 100 yards for the touchdown. We timed it in football pads, and even though he slows up at the end, 12.5 seconds to cruise goal line to goal line. 14 zip, KC. Not too shabby for the linebacker. You should take me that long just to get my stance. <laughs> Third at 22 for the Chargers and Freeze. He's got Ronnie Harmon. And Harmon is put down after crossing the 35 to the 34-yard line. So will be Will they bring in John Carney for the long field goal try? As it was Roman Pfeiffer, the second-round draft choice out of UCLA, making the hit. Gerald Robinson got a little pressure coming around the backside. He's a right end. And the thing I like about Freeze is it looks like he's, he's unaffected by this pressure early in the game. He's been remarkably cool and composed. That's, that's, that's a great asset to have as a quarterback. It's just, kind of repelling all that heat. Those defensive linemen like to see a little fear in your eyes, and if you don't show it, it's a big plus. John Kidd will come in to punt it away for San Diego. They were thinking for a minute about the possibility of a long field goal try of 51 yards for John Carney. His longest this year, 48 yards. And now they'll take the delay of game call. Give Kidd a little more room to work with. A minute and 20 seconds. Left in the first 15 minutes of play, one dominated, completely owned by the San Diego Chargers to the extent that the Rams have only had three snaps. Delay of game, offense, the yardage penalty is declined, it is still fourth down. Well, more than anything else, Joel, the Rams' defense really hasn't stopped San Diego. San Diego stopped itself. The penalties have killed the Chargers on this drive after rolling down the field if you joined us late on their first possession. 82 yards and seven points on a 30-yard pass to Anthony Miller. The Rams left a regular defense in here. Kid coming over to the near side, trying to get it out of bounds. Will it make the end zone? Yes. So when we come back, the Rams will get the ball for only the second time in the early going, down by seven. Finals already in on the ITT 10-minute ticker. The winners today, Washington 7-0 now. New Orleans putting together another solid effort, beating Philadelphia as the Saints are 6-0. Other winners, Buffalo, along with Dallas and Minnesota in the early games this afternoon on the ITT 10-minute ticker. And there's some of the late starts and a great start once again for the Kansas City Chiefs. And look at Atlanta's doing at San Francisco. First and 10 for the Rams at their own 20-yard line, down by 7. Robert Del Pino, the former Missouri Tiger, across the 22 out to the 23-yard line, put down by Junior Seau and Leslie O'Neill. Well, the Rams and Jim Everett, some of them said they don't have a lot of 
direction offensively. They don't know what they want to do at this point. Struggling so much the passing game. They have not scored a touchdown in the first quarter this year. In fact, in the first and fourth, 15 minutes of play this season, the Rams have been outscored 72-9. to Everett with plenty of time. Throws behind the tight end Jim Bryce. What a grab he made. Coming back to get it. And it's a first down for the Rams. Their first of the afternoon at the 44. Well, Price is Everett's replacement for Houlihan. Houlihan, the fine possession tight end that moved on in Plan B this past year. And Everett told us yesterday he likes his kid. He's his roommate on the road, and he thinks he's got a chance to be something special. That's the end of the first quarter, one that was dominated by San Diego's. The Chargers lead the Rams by seven. I've heard of slow starts before, Dan Hampton, but this is ridiculous. I had a feeling that San Diego's just physical advantage would, would be something that would bear out a good graphic like that. And so far, that's what it's been. San Diego's just been pounding away. First play of the second quarter. A 7-0 San Diego lead. The Rams have it first and 10 at their own 44. Delpino cutting it back against the grain. In the San Diego territory, a nice run. Half of the run, he was going backwards. But he'll take it out to the 48 of the Chargers. Well, the Charger offensive line has been shuffled more than government papers this year, Joel, but they finally gotten five guys on the field they're real comfortable with. And part of that reason is Jackie Slater, the big right tackle, who I played against for years and years, and I consider him maybe the finest offensive tackle I ever played against. But not only is it just his physical presence, but he's the old, kind of the old stage out there. He's been playing so long, he's older than a volcano, but he's still a terrific football player. Second down and a couple at the San Diego 48. Leading rusher for the Rams this year gets it again. Robert Dalpino, he's about a yard short of the first down. And we'll see. Rams get ready for their third and short. We'll check in with Bob Costas. Joel, the Jets continue to play well, looking for their third consecutive victory. They have a 10-0 lead at home against Houston. Their touchdown drive capped by this three-yard run from Brad Baxter. A while later, Pat Leahy nailed one from 21 yards out. Houston, usually good at home, often terrible on the road, trailing 10-0. Thank you, Bob. But if ever you would have thought a team would have been devastated by one loss, it would have been the New York Jets after that Monday night setback to your former team, the Chicago Bears. Third and less than a yard for the Rams. Buford McGee, the former Charger, across the 45, down to the Chargers 44 for a first down. Well, they've got Doug Smith at center, and Newbury moved back to the left guard. They ran right behind those two big guys, two very, very fine blockers, both moved to the Pro Bowl a couple of times, and a lot of times you'll find an offense gets kind of predictable. When they got to have some tough yards, they usually go behind the horses. Buford McGee with the Chargers from 84 to 86. Last year for the Rams, he carried it only 44 times, but he caught 45 passes. The Rams formation, they love to throw to the backs of the flat. First and 10 at the 44. Flags down to the play. Plenty of time again for Everett. The dump off is to Del Pino. And is he ever put down in a hurry by the linebacker, Henry Rowling? Well, we've got a penalty flag here, but that was a play that was designed to go downfield. And for so many years, we'll see. We'll see what it is here. Oh, it's it against San Diego. For, for so many years, the Rams did probably as, as good a job as anyone in the league. In Offside, 92 defense. Lined up in the neutral zone. Five yards, repeat first down. Grossman, the pass rushing in, he's trying to get a little little bit of an edge, but the thing is the Rams have not been effective throwing the ball downfield. On that last play, we saw Everett pump twice before he dumps to the back in the, in the flats. Part of that is Everett may not feel as confident as he used to in going downfield, and the other thing is defensive backs have just been covering the receivers. Jim Everett told us yesterday they're going up against the wideouts, trying to take everything away from the wideouts now. With the way the Rams have thrown to the long ball over the last three seasons, Del Pino has the first down on first and five. All the way down to the San Diego 31-yard line where he's tripped up by Joe Phillips. Uh-oh. Tom Newberry, the left guard, is down holding. No, it's Damone Johnson, the, the tight end. Yes. We'll find out the injury situation for the starting tight end, Damone Johns with the Rams, when we return to Anaheim Stadium. Damone Johnson injured his left ankle on that last play, and you'll see why. 
you'll see him come in motion there. 86, now he's squared up on Junior Seau. Seau takes the outside shoulder away, giving Del Pino the inside gap, but there, 50. Gary Plummer, the middle linebacker, comes up and rolls up on his leg. First and 10 for the Rams, the 31 of San Diego. Everett in trouble, dumps it off, McGee's got it. And McGee's got another first down, cracked down by Junior Seau from behind. 13 yards on the completion. The Buford McGee, nice recognition. Well, they brought a, a safety blitz there, Everett knowing that he had a, a guy that was hot so much of the time. If a guy blitzes, the guy that's responsible to blocking, if you can get the ball to him, he can get some yardage. We asked Jim Everett yesterday to give himself a report, at least a report card. He said a C so far, as you see the Dr. Pepper 10-minute ticker with the late starts today. And landed the big surprise early over San Francisco and the Jets leading by 10. A C so far, but he said, you have to remember during the preseason, we really made a commitment to the ground game. We didn't throw the ball that much during the preseason. Everett with time and a wide open Jim Price. Touchdown! Oh! That is Everett's first touchdown of the year, and you've got to see a guy that's happy. Only a touchdown pass away for Jim Everett, and he's finally got it. The receiver is wide open, and you'll never see a man in the end zone. His tight end, Tony Zendejas. Perfect. And the extra point duties. Right on target once again. Well, Everett sees Price on an outside corner pattern. Oh, yeah. Got to love it. Good form, Dan. John Robinson said at times he looks a little bit scattered back there in the pocket. Didn't look that way that last time. So Everett's finally got a touchdown pass. The Rams have a score early in the second quarter, and it's all even in Anaheim. Well, you didn't have to leave the Everett compound for that touchdown pass. Roommate to roommate, Jim Everett to Jim Price, the former Stanford Cardinal. And Everett finally has his first touchdown toss of the season. Over the last three years, 83 touchdown passes for Jim Everett, tops in the NFL. Hard to believe he was shut out that long five games worth. I know who's going to buy the room service this week. Yeah, it'll be Donnie Elder bringing it back. Good burst to the outside across the 35. And he's all the way to the 38-yard line with the Chargers have it first and 10. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Call Domino's Pizza right now and you'll be enjoying a hot, delicious pizza during halftime. Well, Damone Johnson just left the contest due to an injury. The man who came in, Jim Price, the touchdown reception. Well, the thing is, Everett goes straight back, sees the entire field. See, he sees Price break free from the safeties. And a lot of people have questioned his, his, you know, his courage, his technique, his mechanics. Hey, that looked like a big-time quarterback there. 28-yard return, Donnie Elder. Gives the Chargers great field position, first and 10 at their own 38. Anthony Miller on the reception. Short pass play outside the 40 of the 44-yard line. Well, they went with a long one. On the very first pass play of the game, John Freeze looking for Sean Jefferson. Does that tend to open it up a little bit for the underneath later? Well, I think what that does is send a signal to the defensive backs. Hey, you can't get up on your toes on us today because we're going to go ahead and air it out early and let you know that we're not scared to throw against you. So I think it does. It sends a message. John Freeze, one of only two quarterback starters in the NFL. Under 50% in completion so far this season. He made it off to Rod Bernstein for a first down. In the Rams territory, down to the 46-yard line. Huge hole over the right side. That's the play that Jeff Fisher was worried about it's a counter g it's a they call it the counter g it's a counter gap they bring those big guys that get big bodies on not so big bodies they've got linemen on linebackers here you'll see the left guard getting out there it's really the sweep play they're just stretching the defense and the only thing is 
how long can the Rams stand up to this kind of pounding? They're not as big as San Diego. It's tied at seven with nine minutes and 50 seconds left in the first half. All of those first downs come in on the Rams' last possession. And on first and ten, Bernstein high stepping his way to the secondary with a flag on the play. Another first down at the Rams' 34. What is the penalty marker all about? Chargers have killed themselves with penalties already today. And they do it again. That is their fourth. They had three penalties on the last drive. Holding, number 77 offense, 10 yards, repeat first down. Second holding call on the rookie for Michigan State. Second round draft choice for Dan Henning and Bobby Beathard, Eric Moten. Well, you'll see on the left side of your screen there, the defensive player gets back up and underneath him. He's got to try to tackle him. Here you'll see 70. That, now, that's not real smart. I don't care if you're a rookie or you've been around 20 years. And, the guy can't make a, a difference in the play. Don't do something like that. Try to tackle it. Let him go. So instead of first down deep in Rams territory, it's first and 20. Back at the Chargers, 44. With Bernstein in motion. Bernstein's the target. And he's got it at the midfield strike. The reception good for a little more than six yards. He was a running back in high school. Converted to a... Well, a tight end in high school converted to a running back in college and then back to a tight end in the pros. He said it's been a very smooth transition, especially since the knee injury, because he feels like he's not taking as many shots on the knee as he would if he was on tight end on the line. Well, that's the thing. As a running back, the only time anybody comes after you is when you got the ball and you're ready and you're prepared for it. At tight end, you got guys being flung around in there, and, and he was a little bit more concerned with his knee, so he said, running back's fine with me, coach. Call it second and 13. Breeze with pressure, has a man, it's complete. Lewis has it, he'll go the distance. There is a flag on the play. Touchdown San Diego. Flag was thrown normally where you see a defensive holding call. Well, I think Jerry Gray said, I know I'm beat, I'm gonna try to grab him and stop him if I can. Touchdown. It was called on Jerry Gray. Nate Lewis with the 49-yard touchdown reception, and the Chargers take the lead once again. Well, Jerry Gray was up in a bump and run from the left side of your screen. Free sees that Lewis has beaten it. And now Gray's just in a tailgate position trying to grab whatever he can get hold of. Not good. John Carney in for the extra point attempt. And the former member of the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame putting the Chargers back up by seven. They've got their second lead of the contest with 8.38 left in the first half. John Carney ready to give it back to the Los Angeles Rams, but another very effective drive for the San Diego Chargers. They started back at their own 38-yard line. Getting some runs in early, and then the big pass play, a 49-yard touchdown score. On the reception by Nate Lewis, Vernon Turner lets it move over his head in and out of the end zone, so the Rams will have it now. First and 10 of their own 20-yard line. Another time out of the field, we'll be right back with the Big A in Anaheim, California, with a little more than eight and a half minutes left in the first half. Chargers back on top of the Rams once again, 14-7. to Joel Myers and Dan Hampton in Anaheim Stadium. The big play big part of the San Diego offense already today as you can see average yards per play a 30-yard touchdown pass from Freeze to Anthony Miller and that last one a 49-yarder to Nate Lewis well the impressive thing is both touchdown drives that they had gotten into a first and 20 hole and they got out for a touchdown so that's that's very very nice third time the Rams have had the ball in the first down and first and 10 the give goes to Robert Delpino over the left side, he was dragged down by Leslie O'Neill in a hurry after a gain of only a yard. When the Rams don't get the ground game going for their last 21, and they're under 100 yards, a 1-10 record for the Los Angeles Rams. Well, John Robinson has traditionally been such a, a big advocate of big guys knocking people off the ball, running backs making $1,200, $1,500 a year. 
And, I mean, I think it really bothers Jimmy if they can't get the running game going, and it bears it out there. They don't win. Student body left, student body right. For seven seasons at USC, John Robinson now in his ninth year as the head coach of the Rams. Everett with time and a wide open Jim Price. His roommate's got another grab and a first down for the Rams, but there is a flag down on the far side. As Price is put out of bounds at the 32. Well, if Everett keeps throwing a Price on next week's road game, they're going to have about 10 guys wanting to sleep in the same room with him. Offside, defense number 92, lined up in a neutral zone, penalty line, first down. Bird's trying to get that edge, Dan. Well, the thing about Grossman is he, he's more of a speed type of defensive end. He, and the thing about the, the defensive ends on that line of scrimmage, the more ground that you get, that you can eat up on your lineup, the less you have to make up when you're trying to turn that corner. So, Grossman's a fine player, need to stay out of that neutral zone. First and ten for the Rams at Everett, their own 32-yard line. Delay, Robert Del Pino barely gets out of the backfield. Put down by George Hinkle after a gain of only a yard. It's been a real turnaround for the San Diego Chargers of the last two games after allowing an average of more than 380 yards and 25 points in their first four games. San Diego has given up an average of only 230 yards and a little more than 13 points over the last two. So the defensive front seven in particular has really turned it around. Well, Big Joe Phillips and Hinkle and those guys inside, they're, they're close to 300 pounds, all of them. And, it, and it's just tough to sell yourself to run against those guys, especially when they've got Junior Seau, the headhunter, up and down the line with you try to run tackle to tackle. It is a very warm day in Southern California. Temperature right around 90 degrees, a little bit better than 90 degrees. Zebert's throwing for Del Pino. On the Missouri Tiger, takes a shot after a reception of close to seven yards, put down by Stanley Richard. And Junior Seau. Look now on the Dr. Pepper 10-minute ticker at all the scores of the afternoon. Washington at 7-0. New Orleans also undefeated. They are 6-0 after topping the Philadelphia Eagles on the road today. Buffalo rolling right along to a 6-1 record. They destroyed Indianapolis. Dallas has really turned things around and finally winning another one at home after losing their first two at home this year. The Cowboys have a 5-2 record. And in the late games, Kansas City all over the Miami Dolphins, just like they were on Monday night against the Buffalo Bills. As Houston finally gets on the board against the Jacks. Everett with a quick one for Allard. Allard was the motion man, and he's got a first down on third and four. Great job by Henry Allard reading the, the defense and just breaking this pattern off quick. Everett gets the ball to him in a hurry. Here you'll see San Diego. They're trying to just crush the pocket with an outside blitzer. There... Henry Ellard, one of the, the real classy receivers in this game. He, did, he doesn't get mentioned all the time in all pro teams, but, oh, man, this guy used to kill us every time we'd come out here. So it's great to see Henry getting off and, and catching some balls early. He told us yesterday it's frustrating. You go 10 yards down the field, and all of a sudden you hear a roar from the crowd. You look back, and Everett's on his wallet that's too what, often this year. That's what it's been. Counter play for Cleveland Gary, his first carry. And he hangs on to the ball, which is news for Southern California because that's why he's not seen as many snaps fumbleitis early in the season. Gary Plummer on the stop for San Diego. Gary Plummer basically is the enforcer on all that defensive interior. He's just a terrific linebacker, played it a long time. And you got to think that it, San Diego, they look to a guy like that for leadership because... They've got an awful lot of young players, especially in offense, and, and Plummer's one of those guys. He's kind of the old sage, and he's still playing good football. Playing with a four, a four pins and a fractured thumb. Everett's hit his last six straight, make it seven for seven, as Jim Price, his roommate, has a first down inside the 40. On third name, goes to Price to the 35. I'm not kidding, Joe. They're going to have roller beds in there. There, San Diego, just bringing an outside blitzer there. And Leslie O'Neill, Everett calmly just throws it out there to Jim Price. First down, nothing to it. Free agent acquisition out of Stanford in his first year, Jim Price. Doing a great job in the first half. Jabone Johnson, normally the starting tight end, but he's been slowed early by an injured left ankle, and Price making the most of the opportunity. And now it's first down for the Rams. Started with the bottom of their own 20. 
Jones all the way down to the San Diego 35. Damone Johnson is up to the other tight end. Pass completion. And now Jim Everett has hit his last eight straight. Talk about a quarterback and a groove. This doesn't look like the same quarterback that was playing in, in New Orleans earlier in the year. They, the Rams just seemed to have gotten off track early, and, and they really felt like this break was a time where they could kind of regather and regroup and, and more than anything else, maybe get some guys healthy. Having Jackie Slater back, Doug Smith, the, the fine center, it's, it's a lot better picture for Everett when he's standing up back there than when he's sitting down. After missing his first two, Jim Everett hit his last eight straight. The counter for Robert Del Pino on second and short. I believe he's got the first down. Nudging it inside the 25-yard line. He's put down by Joe Phillips and Junior Seau. And it is a first down. Is this going to be one of those old shootouts in very warm conditions where you could possibly, Dan, wear down a defense that's been out there too long? Well, I don't know if, if you can really wear down the, the San Diego defense. That they're used to this weather, and they practice in it all the time. And they've got those big guys that can stand up and play and play. Uh, big guys don't have to play at 100% efficiency every play. Just sheer, sheer weight and size can let you get by every once in a while. Where a smaller guy has to play at 100%. First and 10 for the Rams. The Charger 25, the reverse for Ron Brown. Brown inside the 20, scrambling for the first down and the 14 to the Extra effort. And that brings us to the two-minute warning at Anaheim Stadium. So the Rams are driving, but the Chargers still maintain that seven-point lead of the two-minute warning. Well, I was just talking about the warm conditions in Southern California, but I didn't think the heat would get to everyone this early. Hopefully it is cool and comfortable in the studios in New York as we're getting ready for the Domino's Pizza NFL Live Halftime Report. I don't think the threesome in New York will be doing the same gyrations Bob Costas, Will McDonough, and Bill Parcells with. An NBC News update as well. All the scores and highlights. But the temperature in the low 90s this afternoon. Well, John Robinson coming off a 5-11 and 11 year with the Los Angeles Rams. He was very honest with us yesterday. He said, we were a lousy team. The players didn't perform, and the coaching staff didn't do a good job either. First and 10 for the Rams with Charger 14. Pocket holding up for Everett. The reception, the first for Aaron Cox of the day. Inside the 10-yard line for about five yards. Junior Seau taking down the wide receiver. And talking with Robinson, he, it's interesting, Joel, because he's been a, a, a great coach here in L.A., but I, I, I think I sense an awful lot of change in philosophy. He feels like the teams that they had in the 80s, they were great and they were fine, but, and, but he, he really feels like he's having to make some major changes for the 90s. And one was going to the new style of defense, bringing Fisher in with that attacking 46 look. The other thing is an offense. He's made some different commitments. Everett into the corner for Price. Will there be a flag on the play? Yes. yes. Flag. Martin Bale is pulling down the tight end. Jim Price has been open consistently in the first half. Well, Martin Bayless hasn't had too good a day Pass so far. interference, number 44, defense in the end zone. The ball will be put on the one-yard line, first down and goal. Well, you'll see, Jim Price isolated one-on-one -on -one with Bayless. Bayless beat, he's just trying to tackle him now. Definitely interference, definitely first down. And Bayless getting the start over the last three games for Anthony Shelton, who started the season at strong safety. So now it's first and goal as the Rams try to tie it up at the one-yard line. A minute 20 seconds left in the first 30 minutes of play. With Ian Del Pino, it'll be Del Pino. And he is wrapped up right at the one-yard line. Henry Rowley coming in from the outside. The linebacker making a fine play. He's the one who picked up that fumble last week and rambled 57 yards deep into Los Angeles Raider territory. Well, that's some of the things that you have to do to be a... A, a good team is create big plays. Joe Phillips and Ostag will knock that one out. Here, you'll see him knifing in from the outside, just tying up the legs, keeping Del Pino from a being able to jump over. Second and goal. Just outside the one. Under a minute left in the first half. Del Pino tries to go low this time. Does not get in. He's just inside the one-yard line. Clock continues to roll with 30 seconds left. Rams have plenty of timeouts remaining, all three. 
And now they will stop it using their first in the first half. But in talking about Robinson and the change in, in his commitments, I just, I just think that they really need to punch this one in. Here, right back to Los Angeles on NBC. Ram Savage just inches away from the goal line, trying to tie it up with 22 seconds left in the first half, and it's third and goal. Del Pino in the eye behind Buford McGee. It's Del Pino, and he's in. Touchdown, Ram. Any other name is still a rose, and John Robinson got down to the one-yard line. He ran the same exact play three times in a row. The third time's a char charm, but I mean that, that just goes to show you John Robinson still believes in certain things, and he stuck with that one till it went. Tony Zendejas trying for the equalizer. And it is all even at Anaheim Stadium. Sixth touchdown of the year for Robert Del Vino, the former Missouri Tiger. He has six of the nine Ram scores so far this season. And it's tied at 14. Del Pino, the leading rusher for the Rams, and also came into the game as the leading receiver. Well, when we talked to John Robinson yesterday, he was very matter-of-fact about it. They've had a week off to prepare, so two weeks to get ready for the San Diego Chargers. He said, look, we've got 11 games left. Realistically, we've got to win seven or eight to put together any kind of season. Well, I, I think that's the key thing. Maybe the Rams have a little bit more to play for today. San Diego, one and five. They kind of have to look at just trying to be respectable and gain respect this year. Whereas Robinson, hey, he says that we are still in this thing. If we get to three and three, then we can start that surge. And, and the thing is that if he felt like that week off got him a chance to get some of his big horses back off the injured uh, list. And, and he, I just think he really feels like this is a fine football team and it'll be a lot better in December than it is today. On the other side, Dan Henning told us that it was like a Super Bowl win in the locker room of the Coliseum. The San Diego Chargers beating the Los Angeles Raiders for the first time in many, many years on the Raiders' home surface. First time they'd ever beaten the Raiders since they moved to Los Angeles. And he said, but what was great about it was on Monday, they were back to business. They well, weren't doing those things that they were doing on Sunday. Well, that shows you that those kids have started maturing and, and, and they're really wanting to be a good football team rather than just talking about it. Lewis waiting back deep, but it'll be a short one. And it'll be Nate Lewis. He's got to hurry up. Loose ball. Can the Rams get to it? Get down inside the five. Who's got the ball? I think San Diego came up with it around the two-yard line. Nate Lewis a little bit nonchalant of the play. Yes, San Diego's got it with 14 seconds left in the half. You talk about a car wreck waiting to happen. <laughs> that was smart for the kicker to kick it onto that dirt. You get some bad bounces, and it was crazy. Dejas just punches it through the hole. Here you'll see, once it hits this dirt, it's hard to play it, like those shortstops. Nobody knows where it's going to go. There it gets a bad kick. San Diego's darn lucky to get this ball back. Sammy Lilly almost came up with it. And then running down, Linnell Sanders, former Chicago Bear, trying to pick up the loose one. He's their headhunter on special teams. He'll always be around the ball. It's tied at 14. Ronnie Harmon, Green almost got him right on the goal line. He surges ahead outside the one. Kevin Green doing a good job on the outside. There is a timeout called by the Rams. Be right back for the final six seconds of the Big A, tied at 14. Well, three of the strongest teams in the NFL. Dallas turning out to be quite a unit this year at 5-2 and two now with their win over Cincinnati. Minnesota bouncing back from a devastating setback to Detroit last Sunday. And now Houston has taken their first lead of the day over the New York Jets. Kansas City continues to roll. And we'll see the Chiefs next week at Mile High Stadium in Denver. Seconds and nine. And going nowhere to running back for the Rams. Try to stop it one more time with a second to go. Yes, they have called a timeout. 
That was Marion Botts who didn't fumble the ball all last year. Rushing for better than 1,200 yards, so a pretty safe call going to number 35. Well, not only that, but I, I just think San Diego's offensive line better not be taking these plays off. They need to get some surge. They're, they're almost in danger of getting a safety called against them here. They need to kind of get somebody knocked around off that line. You'll see Butts hitting up in there. I, hey, that's just a, a step one way or another from a safety. Alvin Wright plugging that gap and making the hit for the Rams. Big number 99 who's back after missing the Packer game. They're still missing Mike Peel. They're missing some of the big bodies still up front. Chris Pike has done a fine job for John Robinson, and he was telling us about the rookie fifth-round draft choice from Mississippi State, Robert Young, who you'll see throughout the course of the afternoon, number 76, who has done a sensational job. They didn't expect to use him that much in the early going, but John Robinson says he's a keeper. He wants to eventually put him on the outside in an end position. He's very developed in the lower half of his body. He's the bulk up during the offseason up top. So positive things for this 4-3 alignment for the Rams down the road. And did Green get him in the backfield? Yes! unit I, I've got to think that they they have to look at themselves in the mirror inside there and say what were we thinking Dan why would they throw the ball just to get it out of there well you've got the number one rushing attack in football if you can't just knock people off the line and, and get out of the end zone then you got problems there the Rams swole up big time and kept them from making anything so Kevin Green the first one there and then he got help from big number 53, Fred Strickland. And all of a sudden, a halftime lead, an unexpected one for the Los Angeles Rams as they're up by two. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station and a word from the NFL. Myers with Dan Hampton, the Rams with a two-point lead scoring on that safety on the final play of the first half. And Dan really has, it's paid off moving Kevin Green around in that 4-3. Well, that's the thing. He's so much better when he plays in space. Here, basically unblocked comes in and it traps the back for the safety but the thing is he's so much better when he stands up and moves around so the momentum has certainly turned in the second quarter and now at halftime as the rams lead it by two let's head to our studios in new york now and nfl live with bob costitz this is the domino's pizza nfl live halftime report brought to you by domino's pizza nobody knows like domino's how you like pizza at home Okay, Bob Costas with Bill and Will, and we'll get their comments in just a moment. Quickly, though, right to the scoreboard. Kansas City playing at home, pounding the Dolphins 28 to nothing. You'll recall the Dolphins beat them 17-16 in that wild card game at Joe Robbie last year. But Don Shula's team is decimated by injuries this time around. And Christian Okoya has been giving them lick after lick. He carried the ball the first five plays from scrimmage for Kansas City, including this 38-yard touchdown run. He had 18 first-half carries for 117 yards. And then a real crusher, Sammy Smith, goal line bound, coughs the ball up. Picked up by Chris Martin, the linebacker, goes 100 yards for a touchdown. Second longest touchdown return with a fumble in the history of the league. The record 104 yards for Jack Tatum of the then Oakland Raiders against the Packers in September of 1972. What is the third longest, you asked? I'm happy to oblige. 98 yards by Papa Bear George Hallis for the Chicago Bears in November of 1923. They were on the road, folks. The game was played in Marion, Ohio against the Oorang Indians. Bill? Well, Kansas City, I'll tell you, the last two weeks here now, Buffalo, Miami, considered probably last year to be the two top teams in the AFC. They're playing as well as anybody. Denver on the road next week for first place. Houston on the road this week, where historically they have had problems under both Glanville and Pardee, and they spotted the Jets a 10-0 lead, but now at the Meadowlands, the Oilers have claimed the advantage at 13-10 over Bruce Coslett's team, going for their third consecutive victory. On the Jets' opening drive, it's Ken O'Brien off the play fake. He'll throw across the field to Brad Baxter. Baxter, after making the catch, will break a tackle and get all the way down to the Houston three-yard line. He ran it in on the next play for a 7-0 lead for the Jets. 
A Pat Leahy field goal made it 10 to nothing. And then Warren Moon, following a Chris Dishman interception, which gave them good field position, hits Curtis Duncan for the TD. They missed the extra point. It was 10 to 6. Subsequently, here's Warren Moon on what looks like a college play. The old option pitch out to Lorenzo White. White scores, but Moon, as you saw, really took a knock on the play. And he's been replaced at quarterback by Cody Carlson. Uh, for Houston, and we don't know how serious Moon's injury is. We'll try and stay on top of it for you. But that's why pro coaches don't like to run the option play too much, because that's what's going to happen. Your quarterback is going to get nailed, and he took one right on the chin from Joe Kelly's helmet. Would you ever have run that with Sims or Hostetler? I would have run it with Hostetler, not with Sims. He was a little, little slow to get there, Bob. <laughs> I guess that's a good point, too. Atlanta's playing at San Francisco. The Niners, a big home favorite, obviously, but at halftime, the Falcons lead at 20-14. to 14. Chris Miller got them started with a pair of quick touchdown passes in the first quarter, and they lead by six at the half. In the game you're watching, the Rams get the safety right at the end as Marion Butts is tackled in the end zone by Kevin Green. That's the difference, 16-14 in favor of the Rams at the half. Washington goes to 7-0. They pound Cleveland today, 42-17 at RFK. Actually, the Browns hung with them. It was 21-17 early in the second half, but then the Redskins opened it up. They had a couple of guys with big days. Ricky Irvins had 133 yards rushing for them, and they go on to win it by a score of 42 to 17. And Art Monk caught seven passes for a total of 755 in his career. He moves past Charlie Joyner into second place behind Steve Largent on the all-time list. New Orleans is 6-0. They win a defensive struggle at Philadelphia, 13-6. They used Brad Gable and Pat Ryan at quarterback. The Eagles did between them. They were intercepted five times, and they also were sacked four times, so the Saint defense doing the job as they go to 6-0. and Buffalo is 6-1, and and they are just a terror at home. 42-6 is the final score in this game. Thurman Thomas rushed for 117 yards. Kenneth Davis had 109 yards, including a 78-yard touchdown run for the Bills. Take a look at what the Bills do at home. They're averaging 41 points per game at home. On the road, an entirely different story. They've struggled to road victories against the Jets in Tampa Bay. Then on Monday night, they were clobbered at Kansas City. They get back on their home turf today. Combination of home cooking and Indianapolis as the opponent, 42-6. Well, I thought I saw something in the Buffalo game. It's the first time I've seen them do it in two years. They tried to slow the game down after the first period. They only had the ball for three minutes and 25 seconds. That's why they started running, doing what Detroit does with Barry Sanders, trying to keep their own defense off the field. And I think they were successful with it. Jim Kelly was shaken up near the end of the first half. They tell us he could have played in the second half, but they had such a big advantage. They let Frank Reich come in. He threw a couple of touchdown passes. They sent Kelly home. He'll be fine for the next game. Dallas had to rally late, and they win at home over Cincinnati 35-23. to Dallas 5-2, and Bengals 0-6. Oh Phoenix walloped at Minnesota. Vikings prevail 34-7. to And in the American League Championship Series, Toronto has to win to stay alive. And in the fourth inning, after trailing 2-0, they have claimed the lead at 3-2 to at the Sky Dome. And we're back with more. Actually, we'll send it back to Anaheim for the second half kickoff right after these messages from your local stations. Welcome back once again to Anaheim Stadium. Joel Myers, Dan Hampton, the kickoff. And Vernon Turner bringing it back to the 25-yard line as we join you just a tad late. Turner, first year from Carson Newman with a nice return. Talk about a team losing the momentum, Dan, that the Chargers had in the first quarter to the point where the Rams really took it over in the second quarter of play. Well, I think San Diego is pretty happy with everything up until the very last play where they got the safety call on them. And there's a lot of ways you can avoid that, but I think the thing was that the Rams made that play happen. First and ten from the 25, Delfino. Only with two. After the 27-yard line as he's taken down by Joe Phillips. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler bring you this NFL Game of the Month. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. So the Rams lead it by two, 30 seconds into the second half. A two-point conversion of the safety for Kevin Green. First safety for the Rams since 1988. You can see the Rams had only three times in the first half. As Everett is going for the tight end, Damone Johnson. Not much there out of the 30-yard line. A gain of only three on the completion. Say, I'll wrapping him up with Gary Plummer. And that last safety for the Los Angeles Rams. Also picked up by Kevin Green back in 88 against the Raiders. Well, you'll see Green, 91, just come in, unblock Hendrickson. The H-back runs right by him, turns him loose. But the thing is, with this new style of defense, the Rams 
defensive front made that happen. Attacking, pressuring. Last year, it would have been pretty easy to get a first down. This year, it's another story. And now it's third and five at the 30-yard line. I want to continue with that story in just a second, Dan, after this third down with Everett in the shotgun. Everett has a wide-open man and shoots it wide. Henry Eller, who is available to the 40-yard line. Let's go back to that last play, though, and the decision-making of the coaching staff of the San Diego Chargers on that type of play with one second left. Why wouldn't you put a wide out to the far side and just maybe just throw it at his feet, throw it over his head? Well, I guess it. if everyone knew the answers to these questions, Joe would have about 200 million co uh, uh, NFL coaches. But you're right. There's some things you could do to not even put yourself in that position. Kittrick Taylor waits for the punt from Dale Hatcher. Hatcher with a low line drive. Taylor will stay away from it. It takes a charger bounce, and Price, who's been very involved in the first half, the tight end gets a hand on it, fortunately for the Rams. At the 41-yard line, so a weak effort by the putter Dale Hatcher of only 29 yards with flags down back at the original line of scrimmage. John Robinson told us yesterday, two out of every three punts by Dale Hatcher remind you of the old Dale Hatcher when he was doing so well his first couple of seasons in the league, but not lately. As he's shown that type of promise once again. A lot of times they'll play just well enough to break your heart. Ineligible downfield, number 55, kicking team. Penalty decline, first down. Best field position to start a drive so far today for the San Diego Chargers. There's the guilty party, Glenel Sanders. But the Chargers now get it first and ten at their own 42-yard line. They trail by two, and what a sensational first half it was. John Freeze. He had almost 200 yards, a couple of touchdown tosses, one of 30 yards, another of 49 to Nate Lewis. And on play action, looking deep. He looks for Anthony Miller, Henley's he's there, and it's almost taken by another Chargers. It was poked away by Henley coming down. It was Craig McEwen who almost came up with a loose ball. Well, the thing is, Freeze is fearless today about going deep and across the middle. That's something that young quarterbacks traditionally have problems with. Here he's throwing it without any type of uh, pressure in his face, able to step through. Maybe the, maybe just a little bit underthrown. But the thing is, I like the way that San Diego has said, hey, we're just going to go ahead and throw the ball deep when we want to. You'll have to stop us. We're not scared to do it. Second and ten, back at the 42. Ronnie Harmon in the misdirection, wrapped up by Larry Kelt. He gets only two. Close to the 44-yard line. Coming into the game, San Diego was number one in the league, rushing the ball, and 27th in the league, passing. And, and really, the passing game is what has put them into you know the, the, the game here with getting two touchdowns by quarterback John Freeze, able to beat the timing patterns on the blitzes and getting the ball to the wideouts and letting them make things happen. So kind of a reversal of what we really expected. Ronnie Harmon stays in the backfield, their third down specialist who came into the game leading the Chargers in receptions. And now it's third and eight at the 44. It's a planned rollout, a dash. And it's overthrown, looking for Anthony Miller. Daryl Henley with a great coverage. The cornerback... Henley has maintained that starting position for the Rams, even though they drafted Todd Light, the rookie from Notre Dame, who's out today with an ankle injury, an ankle sprain. He may miss a couple of weeks now, but Henley has been able to keep his starting position on the corner. Not only that, but you talk to Jeff Fisher. He says, hey, this kid is a player. A lot of times you put him in a situation like that, you can either become worse or better. Henley is probably one of the best cover corners right now in the league, and the secondary for the Rams is really the bright spot of the defense so far. Three snaps and out for both offensive units on their first possession to the second half. As John Kidd sends out a beauty. Vernon Turner will take it back at the 14. And won't get a thing. Down to short of the 15-yard line. A 42-yard punt with great hang time for the Chargers' John Kidd as the altercations continue. Little melees at Anaheim Stadium with the Rams leading by two. Sunny day in Southern California, and the Los Angeles Rams have the ball back, leading by two as Jim Everett, who joined us late, finally came up with his first touchdown pass of the season in game number six. He found his roommate Jim Bryce. And 
Now the Rams work first and 10 of their own 14. And it with problems go down. George Hinkle was there. Bert Grossman on the opposite side. And a sack for the Chargers. Ron Land, the defensive coordinator, went with a nickel package on first down, counting for the Ram offensive uh, substitutions. There, it's basically a, a defense that covered up the receivers. The line finally got to Everett when he tried to get up the hole in the middle. Dan, some adjustments because both offensives have sputtered in their first possessions. Exactly. Those defensive coaches make big money because they are smart. They know what to do. Fisher made proper adjustments. Lynn did the same thing. Call it second and 13. Del Pino with a big hole. And he loses it on his way down. They say the ground created the fumble. They're calling Del Pino down at the 18. Running backs love that rule. Defensive players can't stand it. Neal made the stop. Rolling after the ball, but it doesn't make any difference. There they give him just a little pass set called the sprint draw. And really, Hinkle got, uh, Joe Phillips got tied down inside a little bit, allowing Del Pino to get outside. No question that, that the ground did cause that fumble. And I guess it would cause a fumble if your head got jammed up into your spine, hitting the ground like Del Pino did there, face first. Henry Rowling made the great play to bring down Del Pino, but also suffers the injury on the play. He's attended to now as we come back to Anaheim. Just like last year, the San Diego Chargers lost a lot of close games. This year, the same story. They lost by six at Pittsburgh. Lost a close win at home to Atlanta. Also lost by eight at Denver. Then lost at home to Kansas City by a point. They've been labeled over the last couple of years a team that'll break your heart in the fourth quarter. And now they're trailing 16 to 14 to the Rams early in the third. As it's third and long. And Everett goes for his one out Aaron Cox. He's got the first down outside of the 30. The 34-yard line. Well, if you talk to these cornerbacks week in and week out like we do, you've got to realize they understand how much pressure helps them. Here, Kelly, uh, Everett, under no pressure at all, able to buy enough time for Aaron Cox to finally get open. Now, I don't care who you are. You, you don't, even Superman can't cover for six seconds, which is about what Everett had to throw the ball there. Got to get more pressure out of that defensive front. Everett's too good to split stand. Aaron Cox, a first-round draft choice out of Arizona State back in 88. What a draft that was for the Rams with Cox in the first round and Flipper Anderson in the second round. Everett with a dump off. Cleveland Gary breaks a tackle, maneuvers his way to the 40-yard line, gets six on the reception, put down by Gary Plummer. Well, that last play, Doug Smith and Newberry had the job of blocking on Joe Phillips. Uh, one of the best stories in the league this year, I think, Joel. Like, a guy that had an awful lot of uh, problems off the field. Well, he basically, you know the story on that. Uh, he was attacked outside attacked. of a restaurant. And this is a T-shirt now that's available, and you can call the Chargers office. It's Comeback Power, big number 75, to support the Crime Victims Fund. As it's second and four, Cleveland Garrett. that story, Joe Phillips did want us to emphasize to the audience that he wasn't in a fight. He wasn't an altercation. It was like a blindside hit. He was simply attacked by three individuals. And the great part of the story is continued, and he is going to receive his law degree after the first of the year from the University of San Diego, and then he will take his bars for the first time in February. So for those of you that would like to make a donation to the support the Crime Victims Fund, you can call the Chargers office or call 619-238-1988. We'll give you that number just a little bit later. First down for the Rams at their own 47. They lead it 16 to 14. Del Pino standing on his feet. The Chargers are the 47. Seau again in on the stop. Junior say how would you rank him? Because to me, he may be one of the best all-around defensive talents in the NFL already in his second season. Well, I don't think there's any question that this kid is an extraordinary defensive talent. But they move him around so much. A couple plays ago, they had him at left tackle, rushing the passer. There, he's in the middle. Sometimes they bring him from the outside on a blitz. So I think in a year or two, he'll be a lot better than he is now. But he has matured. And last year, you know, he used to just play his own game, run through holes, blitz when he wanted to, and say, oh, I thought I heard a call. 
This year he's a different player. More mature, trying to do everything right. Second and four for Everett, who's throwing and has a wide open Robert Del Pino for a first down. The flag is down to play. Throw in the air with the tight end Jim Price. Big play possibly. We'll find out. Did it go against the Rams? 17 yards on the completion. Gordon McCarter, the referee. Maybe a push off by Price. Pass interference, number 87, offense. That's what it is. Company, repeat second down. A lot of times, those possession guys, they like to run right into a defensive player and then more or less bounce off, push off, and then basically uncover for a minute and uh, catch the ball like that. It's kind of a, a sneaky game, but looks like Price not sneaky enough. Seven minutes, 54 seconds left in the third quarter as the clock continues to move now. The Rams lead it 16 to 14, so instead of a first down on the completion to Del Pino, it'll be second and 14 for Los Angeles, back to their own 43-yard line. So the penalties killed the Chargers in the first half, and now it does the same to John Robinson and his offensive unit. guys that you watch him during the course of a game and it'll amaze you how smooth he is and how fast he can run there he just pushes a corner off turns and looks in Everett delivering the ball perfectly not to that either hey these guys are getting the ball up up the field which they have not been able to do that much this year they used to stretch the field better than any team in the league practically ever throwing so many touchdown passes over the course of three years and you know I think they're trying to get back to that now they're gonna say hey we'll throw it across it over the middle deep Everett going for the tight end of Owen Johnson it's complete on the short game and Billy Ray Smith in on that stop in his ninth year from Arkansas having called the number of 54 for some time today well Billy Ray is probably the oldest member of this Charger team and he's still a fine outside linebacker talking with Billy Ray this summer and back in Arkansas and he was very very excited about this season he had so many injuries last year didn't really play the way that Billy Ray Smith is capable of playing and he's one of those guys that you can build a defensive team around him because he has all the attributes you look for great player great leader he's been a bell tower there for a lot of years it's at the 20 or it's second and four and it's Cleveland Gary reversing his direction as he almost lost the ball. He lost the handle, got it back in time though, and loses a yard. <laughs> Joe Phillips looked like he was hungry and trying to steal a loaf of bread out of there. He was just jerking on the ball, trying to get it out. You'll see run, the Rams running that counter OT, pulling Duvall Love and Jackie Slater from the right side. Chargers did a good job of jamming it up. And here you'll see Phillips trying to give me that ball. Big Joe, 300 pound and very, very strong. Strong as anyone on the football team. Good guy. It's great to see him come back and play. And the thing is, in that, in that beating that he took last year, his eye was severely damaged, and there was a question whether he could come back. He, he's almost all the way. 35 for the Rams at the 21. Everett with time. And a receiver. It's Jim Price. He gets a block downfield. He fumbles it ahead. The Rams is down to the one-yard line, I believe Henry Ellard has it. Yes! What a break for Los Angeles. Here you'll see Price just basically run out, get in the flat, turn around against the zone. They're going to be open. And trying to make something happen, just drops the ball. Henry Ellard, the guy that, I mean, he's always around the ball. Even if he doesn't catch a lot of passes, at the end of the game, I mean, he's blocked. He's done things that, you know, a lot of the receivers won't do. There, down there trying to get an extra block, able to get the ball back for the Rams. First and goal for the Rams, the one-yard line. Del Pino gets a block for McGee. He's in. Touchdown, Los Angeles. Touchdown for Robert Del Pino. 
who leads the team in scores. He's got seven of the Rams, ten touchdowns this year now. Well, the big thing about that drive was the Rams were able to get that deep pressure pass offense going again. Robinson said, hey, we're, we're, we're not leaving any cards in our hand. We're going to play them today. And Tony Zendejas, perfect on the point after. So Zendejas with the extra point, and the Rams on their second possession of the second half with a touchdown and a nine-point lead. Are you sure we're in L.A.? Laid back L.A.? <laughs> well, the They're into it. Usually silence is golden here, sometimes platinum. Zendejas kicking it away. Donnie Elder will take it. Back inside his own goal line. And they stay right there. So the momentum on the side of the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams by nine as we come back to the big A. After the second game of the season, head coach Dan Henning fired his offensive coordinator, Ted Tolner. So the offense even more accountable now for the head coach. And that plays off that final play of the first half when there was only a second left on the clock. And Dan, it was a safety for the Rams and Kevin Green. We talked about it, how many different ways they could have avoided this. But ultimately, Dan Henning was the one that said, hey, I think we can run it. They didn't get enough blockers out there in front of him safety and almost no offense whatsoever for the san diego chargers since the end of the first quarter so talk about under the gun and plenty of heat on a coach well it's almost 90 degrees or a little bit above 90 degrees in southern california it's probably about 120 or 130 on the chargers sideline right now freeze throwing on first down down by nine he's got a man it's complete for a first down to the 35 anthony miller takes a shot in the process well jeff fisher just going back to a very basic package, rushing forward, dropping the other seven guys off into a zone sometimes, locking up in a man. Miller very good at finding those holes. I know it's early, but is this possession the game basically for the San Diego Chargers because of the way momentum has swung? Well, I, I just think that Fisher was able to change his strategy, quit blitzing, and let Freeze more or less have a, a shot at his, at his defense. First and ten carry for Rod Bernstein. Huge hole. He's close to another first down, spun down, short of the 45, only inches away from a first down. Chris Pike, big Chris Pike, 6'8", 300-pounder, made the hit. He was in the Chargers camp last year as a Plan B signing from the Cleveland Browns. After a couple of days in camp, they said, okay, take it home, meaning go back and work on it. Well, he took them literally, so he took it home, all the way back to Washington, D.C., and they released him. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, he's been a great find for the Rams. He and Alvin Wright have played pretty much the entire game inside, doing a good job. Second and inches. Bernstein just barely picks up the necessary yardage for the first down to the 46-yard line. Carl Wilson sliding over to make the hit. The Ram defense has just been so much tougher against the run here in the, in the second, third quarters. San Diego's going to get it going. I think they're just going to have to go ahead and let Freeze air it out. They'll bring in the chains. The marker on the far side is down to the 45. They bring in the chains. They needed to go near the 46-yard line. And do they have enough? Yes, by the nose of the football. Well, before this possession since the first quarter, San Diego had only 74 yards of total offense. And 49 of that came on the touchdown pass to Nate Lewis. The Hurts 10-minute ticker. The winners, Washington, New Orleans, and Buffalo. Rolling right along those three powers. Dallas now at 5-2. and two. Minnesota bounces back. Kansas City, who could have suspected they'd do another number on a tough opponent like Miami. First and 10, Bernstein gets away from Jerry Gray. He's got eight, almost nine. Caught at nine yards on the carry. Pike and Stewart finally wrapping up the running back. 6'4", 238-pound Rod Bernstein. Well, Rod carries a lot more power than that 238-pound listing on the, on the program. He runs more like a 260-pounder. Here he makes a great move right there to spin off the safety. Still able to get another six, seven, eight yards. And 
you know, when you talk with Dan Henning yesterday, he says, hey, in my offense, I guarantee you at least 1,000 yards for running back. Well, he's having a split time with butts in a one-two combination. Pretty hard to handle. The ground game has been the spark to this offense all year long. The passing game showed up in the first half, though, and there's the pass for Hendrickson. Second of the yard, right at the first down marker. Making the play, Fred Strickland, the left side linebacker. Second round pick for the Rams back in 88. And coming up tonight on NBC, an NBC News special with Tom Brokaw and Katie Couric. The Thomas nomination. Now the decision. Also man of the people, Pacific Station, and a woman named Jackie. That's the story behind Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy Onassis, the woman you only thought you knew in the story she never wanted to be told. The woman named Jackie, based on the intimate bestseller. That's tonight, only on NBC. San Diego going with the spread here on first down. First down from the 44 and going deep. Anthony Miller against Henley. He's got it. Inside the five. And a flag. I think it was a face mask at the one. 43 yards on the pass play. When we talk about gutsy calls, Henning said, hey, let's go with the spread. They line up with four wide receivers. Just say, throw it down there to one of those guys for let them run under. The Rams counter with a nickel package. Hawkins getting a little heat there at the end. Personal foul, face mask, number 20, defense. Line the tackle. Half the distance from the dead ball spot. First down, goal to go. Well, Henley not able to keep up on the go pattern. Former cornerback from UCLA in his third year, Daryl Henley beaten by Anthony Miller. Miller's beaten a number of corners over the last couple of years, and by far his best day of 1991 this afternoon at Anaheim Stadium. Coming up with a big play once again for the San Diego Chargers. Butts in front of Bernstein on first and goal. Bernstein over the top. Touchdown, Chargers. They're right back in it. What a key possession. Starting with the ball back at their own 20-yard line. Well, it looks like when the offense took a break there in the second, third quarters, they, it, they came back and they were able to put it together. Running the ball effectively at times, but the big, big play was when they went with that spread offense on first down and just basically let everybody run a go pattern. Freeze able to get the time to get the ball to Miller, setting up the score. They used the spread last week against the Raiders, and Dan Henning told us yesterday they like to go to it because it's a quick rhythm offense, and it really helps for a young quarterback to be in that type of set. The extra point right on target by John Carney in a new ball game at the Big A. Well, you know, there's so there's only so many ways. Uh-oh, we've got a, got a melee going. There have been a few of these so far this afternoon. And the two teams don't get together all that often, but they do in the preseason. The two teams did meet during the preseason. Well, I just think that's emotion coming out. The Chargers know that they, they're on to something good. They've got a couple of games where they've played sound. Last week, they won their first game. They, they want to they get after it. The Rams, they want to get to 3-3 three and three very badly. So you're going to see these guys get after it. And looking ahead to next Sunday, NBC Sports presents more exciting NFL action. It all starts at 12.30 Eastern. Bob Costas and NFL Live. First games, Houston, Miami, Seattle, and Pittsburgh. The second games, some of you will see Kansas City and Denver, the game Dan and I will be doing, or Cleveland matching up with these same San Diego Chargers. So check your local listings, but it all gets underway with NFL Live next Sunday at 12.30 Eastern. And all of a sudden, a very tight affair for Dan Henning. And the difference in the contest again, the safety by Kevin Green on the final play of the first half as the Rams lead it by two with 11 seconds left in the third quarter. And there will be a lot of talk about that, obviously, for the next few days of post-game. Regardless... Who wins this contest? There are going to be a lot of questions about the play calling down around the goal line at the end of the first half. But John Freeze and the offense really bounced back on that second possession of the second half. By far the best day for Freeze in his young NFL career. He has 243 yards passing, already a career high. And still, 15 minutes left to play, plus 11 seconds. Carney 
gets into it from his own 35. It'll be brought back by Ron Brown. And a big hole for Ron Brown. Donnie Elder with a flag down on the play. Down around the 20-yard line. Pops him out of bounds near the 35. But got a feeling it's going against the return team. Well, the Rams special teams have been playing so much better than they had in the last couple of years. Generating an awful lot of hidden offense for John Robinson. Illegal block, number 38, receiving team during the return. Ten yards from the spot of the foul, first down. Call is made on reserve running back David Lang out of Northern Arizona. So that takes it instead of the 35-yard line. The Rams will go first and 10 from their own 13. Big win for the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame over Pitt yesterday, and then the next one for Notre Dame. What a classic rivalry this has been throughout the years. The Trojans of USC who won in the Palouse yesterday. Holman Washington beating the Cougars by seven. They're up next for the Fighting Irish right here on NBC. Notre Dame and USC. Jim Everett has hit 15 of his last 16. Passes. And the gift barely got it off to Robert Delpino. Breakdown in the communication of that handoff, but it worked for the Rams for seven yards out to the 21-yard line. And that is the final play of the third quarter. So a tight affair at Anaheim Stadium. The Rams lead it by two at the end of three. Be right back after these messages from your locals. Preview of what we'll see in Barcelona, the 92 summer games. That's the McDonald's Open live from Paris coming up on NBC. And out of the backfield on second and short. Robert Del Pino is popped by George Thornton. He's a rookie from Alabama, their second-round draft choice. Young man from Montgomery, Alabama, with a big play on his first call of the day. And the numbers through three. Well, you remember the first 15 minutes of play, the Chargers owned it. But over the last 30 minutes, the Rams have had the ball for 22 of the last 30. Now look at the Chargers passing game with John Freeze. Boy, exactly the opposite of what you would expect it coming in. Seemed like every time the Rams went to a pressure defense, Freeze was able to get the ball to the guy he had to. It's out of the 16 where it's third and eight. Everett with plenty of time. Going deep. Looking for his wide out. And a flag down as he wanted Ron Brown was in the shutting match down the sideline. It looked like Donald Frank the corner. Will it be a hold or will it be interference? Pass interference. Number 57 defense. Automatic first down. I think he means 27. Donald Frank. Yes. And Rowling said, hey, I wasn't even in the same county. Don't call my number. Yes, it's Donald Frank there. You see him. Not looking back for the ball, basically trying to play the receiver's hands and slap his hands down, keeping him from being able to catch it. You'll get caught every time like that. The smart thing to do is look back and, if anything, run over the guy. But if you're looking back for the ball, you can get away with it. A 36-yard penalty on Donald Frank gives the Rams a first and 10 to the 48-yard line. Over the middle, Aaron Cox takes his shot. He's down to the 44 for a gain of four. That was the eighth penalty and almost 100 yards in Markoffs on those eight for San Diego. It's the Dr. Pepper 10-minute ticker. Rolling down all the scores. Well, now can the Rams answer after that long drive by the San Diego Chargers? An 80-yard drive finished off with a one-yard touchdown run by Rod Bernstein. There's 13 and a half minutes left of the contest, and the Rams lead it by two. Second and six from the 44. Everett with problems and Buford making the nice grab. Inside the 25, the former Chargers burns his former teammates. Great hands. Well, for the first time in quite a spell, Everett had some pressure. It came from Junior Seau, who was working on the center, Doug Smith, right up the middle there. 
they have ever been able to get the ball off. But you've got to think that the Ram offensive line has been doing a great job giving him time today. Something he hasn't had and what the commodity there was an awful lot of in New Orleans or some of the other places they, they had to fight it out this year. So I think Everett has got a lot more composure today than he has been. First and 10 of the 24. Flags into the air. It looks like the Chargers may have jumped early, and that was a good snap by the center, Doug Smith, when he, I guess he was that recognition, Dan. Well, Doug has been around an awful long time, and he knows that if somebody jumps, snap the ball. It's easy five. Encroachment, nose guard, defense, five yards, still first down. Sometimes when we used to play against these young guys, we could jump off sides and then get back, take a second or two, and they wouldn't snap it. I mean, that's a smart guy. You snap the ball, it's an easy five. First and five. They call it on Joe Phillips, but there were about two or three chargers in the encroachment area. So now it's going to be first and five for the Rams down to the 19-yard line of San Diego. Turning point of the season for the Los Angeles Rams, according to their head coach, John Robinson, coming in with a two and three record. They come out 500. They've got the Raiders and the Falcons coming up over their next two. The delay for Del Pino. Breaking tackles for a first down to the 12-yard line. We've talked about the size of the running backs for San Diego. Del Pino, good size, too, at 210 pounds. Well, he's a guy that normally would play fullback, but they moved him to tailback after Cleveland Gary had the fumbling problems, and he has responded in a terrific fashion there. You see just inside slashing. Finally, Stanley Richard, the, the free safety, had to get him pulled out. We would have expected the Los Angeles Rams to be outgaining the San Diego Chargers so far on the ground with 11.35 left in the contest. First and 10 from the 12. Plenty of time for Everett. A bullet to place. Touchdown, Rams! And that's another. the rubies will probably be the toast of the town tonight but the guys that are making it happen are the offensive linemen they are keeping those defensive linemen of the san diego chargers at bay they're ever had all day able to wait look off the primary goes back to price and guns it in there zenday house in for the point after the former houston oiler Again, a nine-point lead that should be a seven-point lead. Don't forget about the safety on the final play of the first half. Be right back to Anaheim. Summer arrived late in Southern California this year. We had a cool summer. It didn't really get warm until September, and now it is hot. As you can see, trying to pull off Jim Everett, he has been red hot. He's hit 18 of his last 19, 18 of 21. Somebody wondered what's wrong with Everett coming into the game. Nothing so far today. Kick by Zendejas, boxed by Elder, picked up by Nate Lewis, and he's out of bounds. A break for San Diego on the bounce to the 12-yard line. Well, Nate Lewis has been kind of the catalyst on special teams for the last couple of weeks, and here he's a man on the spot, able to come across and get this thing before the Rams get down there and get a real cheap ball. Zendejas has been doing that most of the day, the hard line drive fastball away from Nate Lewis. That last drive taking almost four minutes off the clock. Only six plays to travel 87 yards for Jim Everett in the offense. As the Rams are leading the Chargers 30 to 21. And again, the Chargers have to score twice because of the safety. It'll be interesting to see if they stick with their knitting and ground game, or they go ahead and let freeze and try to win it for them. Butts goes in motion on first down. Plenty of time for Freeze and a wide open H back Walker. We misfired. Well, I guess the, that's kind of the answer right there. They're going to let Freeze try to win the game. Obviously, a young guy like that, early in the year, you, you don't expect him to make the plays to win games. But today, it looks like they're going to have to put their eggs in his basket here. Back, able to look over the field. Not much pressure. They're a little bit at the end from Alvin Wright. Just overthrowing. Walker. They 
You've still got an awful lot of time, Joel. I don't know if I would go to three downs and out. Extra defensive backs, Lilly and Newman come into the game. And it's a run for Ronnie Harmon, who's tripped up from behind. Big play from behind. That was Gerald Robinson. Plan B signing this year from San Diego. Former Auburn Tiger making the stop on Harmon. So it's outside of the 15-yard line, only about three on the carry. And it brings up third and long. Well, I just think Jeff Fisher's done a terrific job of getting those guys on his defensive front situated where San Diego is having a hard time blocking them on running plays. Like we talked at the outset, San Diego would expect to come in, leading the league in rushing, and be able to pound and control the ball. So far, the Rams have pretty much shut him down. Seconds and a long six. Actually, third and a long six. And Freeze is on his way down. They strip him to the ball, but they say it was down already. And it was Gerald Robinson again, circling in for the sack. Well, the Rams this year concentrated on defense when they went to the trap. John Robinson said it'll be the same situation next year with Jeff Fisher. We'll go to the draft looking for defensive help. Well, Harry Swain, the left tackle, is just basically beat by Robinson. Here's a guy that Minnesota drafted to rush the passer. He hadn't made it happen so far, but today he's playing great. Looked like it could have possibly been a fumble. Yes. So a break for the Chargers, but they call it only a sack. And now Kidd punts out of his own end zone. Vernon Turner. Waiting back at the Rams, 45. Another beauty from John Kidd. High hanger from the 40. Nifty move by Turner to put it in the Charger territory. And we'll only go about 10 yards on the return, make it 11 exactly. But a big 11 at that for Vernon Turner. The Rams with the ball back. A good field position up by nine. Mistakes have killed the San Diego Chargers today. Physical mistakes, of course, on the field. Mental mistakes on the sideline as well. Play calling in that final series before the first half that turned into two points of safety for the Los Angeles Rams. That'll be questioned for a long time. And penalty flags all day long against the San Diego Chargers. Just far too many. First and ten for the Rams. The 48-yard line. Everett for Price. It'll be second and ten. Talking about that safety, Joel, I mean... If you're the play caller, if you're the defensive coordinator, if you're the corner, I, wherever you are, if you're a part of the San Diego uh, football team, you're still thinking about that play. It haunts you. It's something that's, I mean, it's hard to shake, and it kind of permeates your attitude, almost like a defeatist kind of thing. So, you know, San Diego needs to get the ball back and try to get back on the scoreboard again. Nine minutes, 42 seconds left in the contest. It's Dan Henning. Gets ready for the next offensive series with Anthony Miller on the sideline. Cleveland Gary tripped up. He was trying to get out of the way of the guard, Tom Newberry. No gain on the carry. It'll bring up third and ten. George Hinkle busting up inside, making some penetration there, getting it shut down. Coming up tonight on NBC and NB New NBC News Special, the Thomas nomination. Now the decision with Tom Brokaw and Katie Couric. That will preempt the adventures of Mark and Brian in Erie, Indiana. But it will be followed by Man of the People, Pacific Station, and a woman named Jackie. That's all tonight on NBC. Call it a loss of a yard. So now third and 11 for Everett and the offense. Design roll for Everett, and it's battered away by Gilbert from Henry Ellard. Perfect timing by the defensive back. Well, Gilbert's a guy that has played so well so long, you kind of take him for granted, but they're like a smart guy, just kind of hangs in that back pocket of the receiver, and then at the last second, slaps the ball out. It was a good series by the San Diego defense, getting the Rams shut down, now giving John Fries and his offense a, a couple more cracks at it. And a possession where the Rams could have essentially put the game away. Instead, the door is still open for the San Diego Chargers. Hatcher putting. Hangs up a high one for Kittrick Tanner. And the former Washington State Cougar. They're catching at the 11-yard line. A 37-yard punt by Hatcher. When we come back, the Chargers have it, but they're still trailing by nine.
On the last three possessions for the San Diego Chargers, two of the three have been three snaps and out with a punt, as opposed to the way they started the game with all that momentum and an early 14-7 lead when they had two touchdowns over their first three possessions. Now San Diego gets it first and ten at their own 11-yard line, trailing by nine. The momentum continues to be on the side of the Los Angeles Rams. Plenty of time in the pocket for John Freeze. Good grab of the wideout, Nate Lewis. Green was stretching out, trying to get a finger on it. Jerry Gray the same. He's really good possessions for the Los Angeles Rams. Two touchdowns over their last three possessions. Even further, four over their last six. But that last one may come back to haunt the Los Angeles Rams. First and ten. The only time they started with the ball in San Diego territory. And it was three snaps and a punt. Where they could have essentially put the game away. Clock rolling. Under 8-10 left. Bernstein on second down with the first down outside of the 35. Out to the 38-yard line, a 19-yard carry. Terrell and Stewart making the stops in the secondary. Rod mentioned to us yesterday, you know, my wife heard a game early and said there were 260 pounds I was carrying this year. Remind everybody I'm only 238, please. Well, I, I, that was my, my mistake. <laughs> he just looks like 260. Here you'll see Eric Mooton, the left guard, do a great job of hooking Alvin Wright, the defensive tackle. Bernstein, scary in the second half. First and 10 for the Chargers. 38-yard line, Bernstein for three to the 41. Tough going that time between the two tackles. Checking out the Dr. Pepper 10-minute ticker. First of all, the late scores. The second games around the NFL today. Kansas City did a number on Buffalo, and in a short work week, Another one against Miami. Atlanta has regained the lead over San Francisco. And the Jets tight with Houston as the Jets try to move over the 500 mark to 4-3. and three. Second and seven for the Chargers. Their own 41-yard line. Under seven minutes left. Breeze has his wide out. It's complete. Plenty of cushion there against Jerry Gray. And it's Anthony Miller with another reception. Well, we're not seeing an awful lot of pressure put on by Freeze. He's keeping a lot of uh, backs, H-backs, fullbacks, guys in, tight ends to try to help slow down the Ram rush. But Kevin Green dropped that time. Now, he's their best pass rusher. If you want to get some pressure, you need to go with your ace. Kevin Green going back to left linebacker today, getting more in space. Robinson said we get more production out of less opportunities. Well, I think he needs to produce rushing the passer. Are they getting conservative too early? It's hard to say. This is a very progressive coach. I, I think he'll come with a package here pretty quick. First and 10 for the Rams, 47 over the middle. It's complete to Taylor. He takes a pop from the strong safety, Michael Stewart. Talking about Jeff Fisher, told us yesterday he's never been around safeties as talented as the three he's working with here, Stewart, Terrell, and Anthony Newman. And that includes what he had with the Eagles and also his playing days with the Bears. Well, the Bears had three guys playing at times that had been in the Pro Bowl, so that's a big compliment. And, and it's not so much just the safeties. That the two cornerbacks are playing super, too. They're free, there's a smart thing, just goes to a little dump. Second and short, second and four, Freeze throwing again. Eluding pressure with a flag down the play, finds Ronnie Harmon for the first down. And Harmon out of bounds with the 31. But it's either going to be holding on Kevin Green or Kevin Green offsides. He got a heck of a jump there on the right tackle. So he may have to resort to grabbing. Roger Thompson. Yeah. First call, offside green. Yes. Like I said, I, I think Fisher knows he needs to get some pressure. Kevin Green feels like if it's going to happen, he's got to make it happen. 91 defense, penalty declined. The play makes it a first down. Kevin Green led the team in sacks for the third straight year with 13 last year. That was the third best total in the NFC. He only picked up his second of the season in the last game against Green Bay. A very slow start, but a different position. Well, not only that, Joel, but if you play at a defensive end position, you're going to be kind of closed down and confined. He's at his best when he's out, able to stand up, get two or three yards away from the tackle, and make the tackle come to him. Five and a half minutes remaining, first and ten chargers. There are 31 of the Rams. Can Harmon get out of the backfield? No, he won't. He is definitely the spark for this squad defensively. Well, when you talk to the guy, you, you look at him, he kind of looks like kind of a, you know, 
one of those wild dogs. He loves to play defense, likes to talk about the attitude here. He just splits the two backside offensive linemen pulling, just goes ahead and wraps him up. And that's the thing. He was out, out the off the line of scrimmage, outside the tight end, way out away from the guys that are supposed to block him, out in space. When he arrived at Auburn, he was 185 pounds. Now he goes at 250. Still moves like he's 220. Second and long. Brings with time. Has Anthony Miller for the first down inside the 20. Down inside the 18-yard line. Well, that's the thing you look at. When you, when you go back and look at this game today, maybe you're seeing John Freeze grow up. He has been able to stay composed all afternoon, and, and now he's making the smart moves. And Anthony Miller available today and frequently his seventh reception. Chargers down by nine. First and ten, the Rams 18. Ronnie Harmon up the middle. Pulled down from behind, making the big play. It was Bill Hawkins. He's missed the last four games with a rib injury. Well, Big Bill kind of McRibbed Harmon on that one. It's a plus to have him back. Second and long. McEwen almost with the touchdown. Off the fingertips of the wide open H-back. Freeze almost had his third touchdown toss of the afternoon. Well, Joe, we talked to him yesterday. We said, hey, you've grown up so much since game one. Where do you rate yourself? He says, right now I'm about a six, but I can get a lot better. Here, a perfect strike. Maybe a little high. That's a real catchable ball. It was right in McEwen's face mask. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, you've got to be able to make those plays. And last week they made some big plays. Today they really haven't made all the ones they have to. On a scale of 1 to 10, giving himself a 6 overall. So far today he's been close to a 10, though. A career high in passing yardage. And now a third and eight from the 14 over the middle. It's complete, but what a shot taken by Nate Lewis. And that was Anthony Newman, the extra defensive back in there. Well short of the first down. And now the Chargers will call a timeout and a decision. They need two scores. Do you go for the field goal now or do you go for it on fourth down? We'll find out as John Freeze deliberates with Dan Henning. Jeff Fisher trying to read the hand that Dan Henning is going to deal now. Will it be the place kicking unit coming on? Yes, John Carney will come on. As the Chargers trail by a nine. Well, I think you've got to go ahead and get the sheriff points because if you don't get anything, then the rest of the game is just completely elementary. Now you have a chance to come back and make one big drive to get a score. Three minutes and 42 seconds remaining. It'll be a 27-yard field goal attempt by John Carney. His 9 of 14 on the season. His first attempt of the afternoon. It comes out of the hold of the punter, John Kidd. And the Chargers cut the deficit down to six. Well, the big blow coming when Craig McCurion couldn't hang on to that ball, and we don't want to single out anyone, but that has to be a, a pass that you've got to make the play on. So the Rams lead it by a six, but, and you hate to dwell on it, but it's the difference in the game right now. On fourth down and about five, they would have definitely gone for the first down or the touchdown trailing by seven but it was a nine point difference because the safety on the final play of the first half dr pepper 10 minute ticker as we check in with all the finals around the nfl dallas at five and two with that victory and kansas city doing a number on miami as the dolphins will fall to three and four kansas city will raise their record to five and two as the 49ers get a late touchdown take a one point lead over the falcons and it is still all even between the Jets and the Oilers. I think John Freeze has, has just shown remarkable improvement. Like we said, he said he rates himself about a six, and then he was telling a story about how he watched film this past week of a game in the preseason with the Rams, and we said, well, what, we, what do you think your rating was then? He, he laughed and said, hey, I thought I was a seven, but I was really about a four. So he's really made a lot of strides in the last couple of months. Now do the Rams have to worry about an onside kick with three minutes and 38 seconds left? They've got their basic package out there. Only five men up on the 50-yard line. The Chargers have a number of defensive backs out there. What you would consider basically a hands team. 
for a team that can get to the ball in a hurry. Well, there's something that you might want to think about. If you remember how Zendejas' kick went in and hit that infield dirt and acted real crazy, they might try for that. And that's it. It's picked up by one of the up men. He cradles it to the 25-yard line and bringing it back to the Rams, their long snapper, Mike McDonald, who was studying to become a fireman. When John Robinson said, how would you like to snap for me? Kind of a crazy story. He says, hey, I'm not really a, a football I'm a football player anymore. I'm a, I'm a deep snapper. And he's about as good as you can get. Kept his job for a lot of years with John Robinson just snapping the football. An outstanding day for both quarterbacks, John Freeze and Jim Everett. A career high, 300 yards in passing today. So many comparisons with Freeze and Dan Fouts. Not the most mobile like Dan Fouts, <laughs> but a very thick, tall guy who can see the field well. Yeah, they scramble about the same way. <laughs> First and 10 from the 25 of the Rams. It's Buford McGee, very sure-handed running back. Ball security of the utmost now for the Rams. As the Chargers, remember, have only two timeouts remaining. San Diego with only two timeouts left. And San Diego had an early 14-7 lead. Then the Rams got a late touchdown. And then a safety on the final play of the first half to go into the halftime locker room with a 16-14 advantage. And they traded touchdowns in the third where the Rams eventually moved out to a nine-point lead early in the fourth. And now it's a six-point differential with 2.55 of the clock moving remaining in the contest. Fourth quarter has been a problem for the Rams before, as you could see. Everett has Ellard, and he can't hang on. And a flag is down in the play. Well, that's usually in an area where they're going to call defensive holding. I see Bayless walking around with his hands up like, what do you, what do you mean, me? It may have been a pick. Was Price was in the neighborhood early. Well, what we're talking about when we say pick is you have a couple of receivers, and when they get in man-on-man -man coverage, they'll kind of run a crossing pattern and screen each Pass other. Pass interference, number 87, offense. Penalty declined, third down. It was called on Jim Price, the tight end, the second call against him like that today. So now it's going to bring up third and long. Well, this is a very, very important series, obviously, but this is probably the down that will decide the game. We'll see what Ron Lynn, the defensive coordinator, goes with. He's going with a pure nickel package. Three wideouts setting up for Jim Everett to operate out of the shotgun on third and seven. Everett with time. Aaron Cox short the first down. The Chargers hold. He's at the 34, needed across the 35, and Gil Bird with a big tackle on the wideout. And now the Chargers use another timeout, so they have one timeout remaining with two minutes and 33 seconds left. It has certainly turned around for Dan Henning for the San Diego Chargers to the point where they do have the opportunity for the victory with two minutes and 33 seconds left. They've got one timeout remaining, and they're ready to get the ball back in decent field position, barring a turnover. As Kittrick Taylor is going back, Dale Hatcher is not the type of punter who hangs up 50, 60 yarders. His last one was only 37 yards. Taylor may get a running start on this back at his own 22-yard line. He had a 24-yard return last week against the Raiders. Thank you. Wobbler in a short one by Hatcher. And it takes a San Diego bounce. It'll be touched right around the 38-yard line. Only a 28-yard punt by Dale Hatcher. I think it's not really football players. It, it, in general, it's kickers and punters that give coaches gray hair. Hatcher, a fine kicker. He'll go out and kick three balls perfect. And then Robinson said, you go on one day, and, it, and you say, what's this guy doing? John Look mentioned at that he still kicks him great in practice. It's game day that upsets him. Well, it obviously looks a lot easier than it is. Now, I'm no kicker, but I know this, that when you have a, a, a job like that, and, and it's a big play, where you, if you drive that ball deep down there and get yourself some good field position, you can be a hero or a goat pretty easy. The Chargers need to travel now. 62 yards to take the lead. 
as Lewis goes in motion on first and ten. Over the middle, it's dropped. But a little bit behind Nate Lewis. Newman defending. Well, Jeff Fisher, the defensive coordinator, going with a very, very heavily pressure tied defense. Receivers all up, uh, corners all up on the line, banging in on those receivers, trying to shut down those deep crossers, and Freeze basically having to go to those little shallow patterns right behind where the linebackers vacate. John Robinson said he can't believe the wisdom that Jeff Fisher has acquired as a coach, and he's only 32 years old. Defensive coordinator for the Rams, second and ten for the Chargers. Plenty of time, and it's dropped again. Nate Lewis. Felt the pressure coming up from behind with his back to the defensive back movement. Well, the Rams going just a basic four-man rush. Freeze just backing up, trying to dump it to him. Lewis drops it. And that's probably one of the things that if Danny could change about his offense, he's had an awful lot of drop passes so far this year. That is something that we just hate to see, and it's something that we really have a hard time getting those receivers to drop. You've got to look for 83 in this spot. Anthony Miller, he's already got seven receptions today. As it's now third and ten from the 38. And is he going for Miller? And it's knocked away by Newman. He wanted Ronnie Harmon. Robert Bailey there, the extra defensive back. 28, not 26, who was just activated due to the injury to Todd Light. You know, there's something about that defense right there that really bothers me. Quarterbacks, an awful lot of time, they get in this mode where they think they have three and a half seconds or something. The Rams went with a three-man rush. Fisher dropped off the fourth guy, basically going to a soft zone with man under coverage. Hey, Freeze could have had five, six seconds to wait to get the ball to a guy when he got open. Instead, he threw it on time to a shallow guy who wouldn't have been any good anyway. Two or eight left. Is this the turning point of the round season trying to get to 500? Third and ten, Ronnie Harmon. Will he get to the first down marker? On his feet, no! The Rams take over on a running play by the Chargers on fourth and ten. So Dan Henning tried to slip the changeup past the Rams, and it didn't pay off. The Rams get it back. Don't forget the Chargers with only one timeout left. John Freeze of the Chargers failing it on fourth and ten, but he had a spectacular day overall and making another chance before it's all over. Well, if they don't have any problem with this kid's play today. He, he did everything they asked him to. A few drops have, have really cost him. But the thing is, on that last series, the third down, with only three guys rushing, he had all day to throw the ball. Little things like that, you just enduring the, the years that you play, you develop experience, you know you've got more time. Let those receivers uncover. He'll learn it. First and ten for the Rams, the San Diego 45, Buford McGee. Hanging on to it like it's a bar of gold for a yard to the 44-yard line put down by Gary Plummer. Updating you once again on scores around the NFL as the Dr. Te Pepper 10-minute ticker. The powerhouse is winning, as expected today. And if this game ends a little bit early, many of you will have an opportunity to possibly finish up the Houston-New York Jets affair that's tied right now at 13, right at the conclusion of today's Rams contest with the Chargers. Well, I think if you had to look at some guys that made the things happen today, it was Fisher had a a darn good defensive package to slow down that running game of San Diego and the offensive line for the Rams controlled the San Diego front but I'm sure Dan Henning's got one thing on his mind one play that he called at the last of the first half the last play of the first half that resulted in a safety for the Rams and Kevin Green when they gave the ball to Marion Butts instead of possibly just throwing it at the feet of the wide receiver to end the half because there was only one second remaining Hindsight's a lot clearer in 2020 sometimes. Easy from up here. McGee again. And San Diego has used their last time out already. Now they can no longer stop the clock. As the Rams will be looking at a third and just about six. Clock rolls. Under a minute and 40 seconds left. But I think the big thing was that 
you know, the Rams offense finally got on track today. That's a, that's a big break. And let's take a look at today's Cannon camcorder. Replay of the game, and it has to be that first one. Finally, after five-plus games, Jim Everett has a touchdown pass. And it went to his roommate, tight end Jim Bryce. How do you spell relief? Well, I, I tell you what, Jim Everett's thrown an awful lot of touchdown passes in the last three or four years. He may like that one the best of all. Buford McGee hangs on to it, despite taking quite a hit up the middle. He gets it down to the 39 on third and six. He'll bring up fourth and four. And the punting unit will come on for the Rams. Under a minute left, this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of the telecast without the express written consent of the Los Angeles Rams and the National Football League is prohibited. And this game is a property of the NFL, the Rams and the Chargers, all rights reserved. And there is an injury as Martin Bayless is down. That stops the clock with 51 seconds remaining. And you know how the Rams feel about this. Yes, we've uh, we've seen some of these pratfalls. Now, it would be a charge timeout to the Chargers if they had one remaining. But they're out of timeouts. Shades of the New York Jets. Well, John Robinson told us yesterday, he said, hey, if we just get back to 3-3, three and three, we're back in this thing. The Oilers taking a three-point lead. And as soon as this game is concluded, we will send you right to the Jets and Oilers contest in New Jersey. Well, you, you've got to think Dan Henning's going to hear an awful lot about the call today. And, you know, we, we've talked that he's, he's been walking on coals for quite a while with his job. But I don't know. I, you know, Joe, we, we were talking here at the break. I, I just don't know what you accomplished by, say, letting Dan Henning go. Who, who are you, who you going to get to come in and do it? So, well, you know. he's already fired the offensive coordinator, so he is handling the offense now as he let Ted Tolner go after game number two. Well, they scored 24 points against a pretty fine Ram defense. It's not really the offense's problem today. The defense just was not able to stop the Rams when they had to. Atlanta has regained the lead over San Francisco 36-34 to at Candlestick Park. And now Everett and the offense staying on the field. Is this a surprise on fourth down? No. Just take a knee and get rid of it. Clock continues to roll. Well, the Rams can take the delay of game and then bring the punting unit on, which is exactly what they'll probably do. Yeah. What's up, man? Under 30 seconds left. Jim Everett with two touchdown tosses today, both going to his roommate, tight end Jim Price. So the Rams will take the delay of game. Dale Hatcher comes onto the field. And the tip drill will be in effect for the San Diego Chargers. Now, can the Chargers get to the punter? Their special teams were spectacular last Sunday against the Raiders. Can they make the big play with 23 seconds remaining? It's a six-point Ram lead, 30-24. to 24. I'm looking at big Jackie hey, Slater right. coming off the field. He was a big part of the reason the Rams won this ball game today. Hatcher get it away in time. Here they come. Plenty of time for a Hatcher. Nobody back for the Chargers. He takes a Rams roll. And now they don't have a touch of one more seconds off the clock as it dies inside the eight-yard line. So 12 seconds remaining. Well, so. Joel, on that, no one was back to return it. A lot of times, if you're, if you're not having a lot of success getting a, a return going, you think, hey, we'll just send everybody we got get a mismatch and see you've got only 10 guys blocking and you got 11 guys coming there's there's someone that should be open and if the Rams do anything incorrectly the time is de uh, destroyed and you got a block but they're the Rams having a fine special teams unit year in year out I mean they no problem at all Chargers out of timeouts with 12 seconds remaining talk about a deep zone it'll be a deep center field for the Rams on this play well Guppy, as we used to call him, Jeff Fisher, when he was playing with me back in Chicago, Guppy's going to send three guys to rush the passer, and everybody else go back and put your heels on the 10-yard line. Don't let them across. But here's where Freeze, if he, if he's, you know, learning these things, he can look and say, there's only three guys rushing. I've got six blocking. I've got a long time for something to happen. 
Only two wideouts setting up for John Fries, who dumps it off to Ronnie Harmon. Harmon will get out of bounds, stopping the clock with six seconds left. So now one more snap for the offense of the San Diego Chargers. Oh, I, I don't know what he's thinking about there. I had six seconds left now, and what's the difference between going 86 yards and 95 yards? I mean, if, if you're going to throw a bomb, at least throw it twice. Get an interference call, something down around midfield, and have another shot at the end zone. Boy, I, now that, that one there threw me. Well, I'm, now they finally put trips out. The last play, they only had two wideouts set up. I mean, you might as well throw a white flag up if you don't try to throw it down the field. Now it looks like they're going to try to stretch it. And Freeze looking for Lewis on the tip drill. It's intercepted by Pat Terrell, and that'll do it. The Rams beat the Chargers by six. So that big play, the safety will haunt Dan Henning for the Chargers as they fall to one and six. For Dan Hampton, I'm Joel Myers. Let's head to Marv Albert and Paul McGuire now in New Jersey.